Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss DNA damage and the DNA damage response as it relates to P53 activation. So we're going to see when the cell decides to actually repair the DNA or commit cell suicide, also called apoptosis. Now, P53 can be activated in a graded fashion. So you can actually have a low activation of P53, which is usually the case when you have minor DNA damage, or high activation of P53 in a case of significant DNA damage. So let's talk about the initial DNA damage. So DNA damage is anything that destroys the integrity of the DNA. Maybe a mutation, a break in one of the strands of DNA, something like that. And so in the case of, let's say, minor DNA damage, uh, we're going to see that the DNA is actually repairable or reparable. In the case of significant DNA damage, it may be irreparable, meaning that rather than attempt to repair the DNA and risk mutations being propagated into future cell generations, the cell would rather commit suicide or apoptosis to prevent those mutations from being propagated into later cell generations. All right? Now, in the case of any DNA damage, regardless whether it's minor or major, significant, we have proteins that are recruited to the site of the DNA damage. The first one is going to be a protein called MRN. So in both of these cases, we have this protein that gets recruited. Um, this protein, MRN, is going to recruit other proteins such as ATM, ATR. Um, depending on the cell type, you're also going to have other proteins such as BRCA2 and so on and so forth. But these are the major ones that are initially going to get recruited. Now, first let's talk about the case of minor DNA damage. This is actually the most complicated case, so we'll cover it first. When there's minor DNA damage, like I said, you have a low or only a moderate activation of P53. When this happens, P53 is going to trigger the upregulation of another protein called P21. Before we really get into anything relating to P21, we need to actually talk about retinoblastic protein, and this relates to what happens when we have no DNA damage. So we have a healthy cell, completely healthy DNA. We would be perfectly fine with that cell if it divided and replicated its DNA perfectly healthy. So in that case, we want an active retinoblastic protein. We want this protein, PRB, to be active. Okay, And PRB is actually active when it's dephosphorylated. In this state over here on the left, this is the inactive form of retinoblastic protein. Notice it's phosphorylated. So if we want the cell to divide, if we want it to replicate its DNA, then this protein, retinoblastic protein, should have this phosphate removed, become active, and when it becomes active, it will complex with this other protein called E2F, and it becomes an activator of cyclins and CDKs, which are called cyclin-dependent protein kinases. But in, in general, what this complex will do is it will promote the cell's progression to the next phase of the cell cycle, in this case, G1 to the S phase. And remember, the S phase is where the DNA gets replicated. And we're okay with the DNA being replicated in the case of no DNA damage because there's no damage, no mutation. So if we replicated the DNA and we generated future cell lines, we would be okay with that because the cells are healthy. Also, what this complex will do is upregulate DNA synthesis enzymes, really anything necessary for the G1 to S phase transition. And if the cell is healthy and the DNA is healthy, we want this activation of retinoblastic protein. So we want something that will dephosphorylate this. And it turns out that in the case of a healthy cell and healthy DNA, that this complex of CDK2 and cyclin E, this is the complex that will actually activate retinoblastic protein. Now, if we have DNA damage, do we want progression from G1 to the S phase of the cell cycle? Absolutely not. Because if we have DNA damage, we need to halt the cell cycle and give the cell a chance to repair the DNA, particularly when it's minor DNA damage. So we do not want progression to the S phase of the cell cycle. So logically speaking, if we want to stop the cell cycle to completely halt it, we should have something that will inactivate CDK2 and cyclin E. Since these are the proteins right here that indirectly give you progression into the S phase. So that's actually the job of P21. So in the case of minor DNA damage, I mentioned that low P53 activation triggers upregulation and activation of P21. P21 will actually complex with CDK2 and cyclin E, and that inactivates the cyclin complex. Okay? While this is inactive, you get no progression into the S phase because these two proteins, 
Remember, we're responsible for activating retinoblastic protein and then progression into the S phase. So the way that minor DNA damage accomplishes this halt of the cell cycle is by triggering the upregulation of P21, which turns off the CDK2 cyclin E complex, and therefore you halt the cell cycle. Now, if the DNA truly is reparable, once the DNA is repaired, then P21 goes away, and you revert this complex back to its active form, then this uh, complex will remove the phosphate from retinoblastic protein, and then you'll get progression into the S phase. But that should only occur once we get this, the DNA repaired, and the cell is healthy, and we're okay with the uh, DNA being propagated into future cell lines. Now that's kind of complicated. Luckily in the case of significant DNA damage, um, I guess it's a bad thing if it happens to you, but in the case of learning it, it's pretty easy and pretty straightforward. So in the case of significant DNA damage that we're going to consider irreparable, meaning there's so much damage to the DNA that the cell is going to just commit suicide instead of risking uh, trying to repair and potentially giving mutations to future cell lines. Again, we have the same uh, complex of proteins that assemble at the sites of DNA damage, but in this case, because there's a lot of DNA damage, you have a really high degree of p53 activation. Okay, a really high degree of this. When p53 becomes overstimulated, as they say, so super high activation, instead of upregulating up p21, um, it will also upregulate pro-apoptosis genes. Okay, so you're going to get more of these. Uh, upregulated, and a pro-apoptosis gene, these are genes such as BAD, BAX, BAC, you can look at them um, really in any kind of immunology or biochemistry textbook, and these genes, once they're transcribed and translated, they ultimately promote apoptosis and you get cell death. Now obviously I'm not going into the process of apoptosis here, but if you're really concerned about that, I highly recommend you go watch my video on the mitochondrial pathway of apoptosis, because that's going to be the major pathway that's going to involve these pro-apoptotic genes. All right, so go watch that. I'm going to try to remember to stick that in the in, as a link in the description of this video. But hopefully this video made some sense to you. Okay, depending on uh, what the extent of DNA damage is, whether it's minor or major, that's going to uh, determine whether or not the cell is going to try to repair the DNA and divide further after it's repaired or just die commit suicide. And actually you could consider this apoptosis really a selfless thing on the cell's part. Because if you had significant DNA damage and the cell actually did live, it may have mutations in this region of DNA that was damaged. Because the cell's repair mechanisms, while they're good, they're not 100% efficient and it can introduce uh, incorrect base pairs. Okay, and so that can be a huge problem, and that can ultimately lead to cancer if those cells do not die. So this is a very good thing to happen, actually. Apoptosis is not a bad thing. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you for watching this video. See you next time.